All right, we do have a couple more, just a couple more minutes um, until um, uh, we actually officially start, but I would like to invite everyone to please grab a plate, grab some food, um, and come on back in, and we'll begin shortly. There should be, um, I see some iced tea. He usually has bottled water. Um, please help yourself to the food, okay? And uh, come on back in and we'll get started. That's one thing, I always find myself so food. <laughs> I never get lost doing that. That's right. It's like a humming device, yeah. So where did you drive in from? I'm very spoiled because <laughs> I'm three miles from where to my work. So, yeah, every once in a while, it's a little friendly drive, but. It wasn't me. <laughs> uh, the tarantula? Yeah. <laughs> Robert and, and Tim were like, we'll go anywhere else in this room that we're not going to stand over there. <laughs> Fine. It looks like you're healing. Yeah, slowly. <laughs> slowly. Yeah, I see you're still living pretty good. I am. Today was a busy day, though, and that's that's what happens. And yeah, it'll take me a day or two, and I'll get. But thank you for for asking. It's been a long road. I'll bet. Long road. Glad to see your back. I'm glad you have handouts because <laughs> most of them don't, and handouts would help. Uh, just keep that in mind for the future. Thank you. Actually, our our, our speaker brought her her um, handouts. So, but you me mentioned that to other speakers as well. Yes, because um, everything that's left on the screen, the resources you can't write. Like, no, no, and taking a picture on the phone is you know small. Um, it's just a suggestion. Thank you. 
Okay. What if you to share the Yeah. 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 Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your reminder, too. Oh, good. <laughs> good, good, good. Anybody sitting? No. Would you let me sit on your own Good evening, all. Um, thank you. Thank you all so much for showing up tonight. Um, isn't this a cool facility? Isn't it cool? It's been years since I've been here. And uh, when I pulled in, I'm like, wow, this is this is really awesome. Um, so you guys are a great group. Um, uh, we're a, a little bit smaller room. So it was hard to, you know, set up um, with tables and that type of thing. So I appreciate your um, patience and cooperation. Um, but we're going to roll right into starting the session. And um, for those of you, um, I know there's some returning people, um, but I, my name is Patty Roberts. I'm the, the Deputy Director for the City of Port St. Lucie Parks and Recreation Department. I am honored to um, be here tonight for our second session of the Wellness Connection. Um, the Wellness Connection is the second program, well, second, um, how do I say it, program that, that I facilitate um, under under my um, wing, um, and Wellness Connection is all about health-related topics. So our first session, and I know we had some people there um, that are here tonight, uh, was in December, and we talked about diabetes and nutrition, and that was a really good session that we held at the event center on US-1 and Walton Road. And um, again, all these sessions are free. Um, they um, uh, do come with a free light dinner and um, and then but the the primary purpose of it is to have subject matter experts come out and share on these topics that are important to us. So in December we talked uh, diabetes and nutrition <clears throat> I had a great um, presenter from Cleveland Clinic Martin um, who walked us through how to eat to manage or prevent di uh, diabetes it was great um, tonight we are here to talk about heart health which is a very, very important topic to many of us in this community. So I, I want to um, thank you all for and, and recognize that you see the need for, for something like this education. And that's what Wellness Connection is really all about, is becoming educated, raising awareness, and in many, in many instances, reducing the stigma 
because there is stigma still involved in some of these topics that we'll talk about. Um, and with Wellness Connection, um, we rotate different areas of town. So uh, we did the, the event center last in December. Um, tonight we're here in the northern section of town in April. And I do have handouts for you. So uh, whenever you get home or, or over the weekend, uh, check them out because you'll have the whole schedule of the event, the programs that are coming up. Um, in April, we're gonna be um, at the, in the west side of town, which is at Minsky Gym. And we're gonna be talking there about tobacco and vaping cessation. And we're gonna close out this year <coughs> in July um, at our beautiful botanical gardens. Does anybody know where that is on Westmoreland? Yeah. Um, and that topic will be how to access healthcare. I'm very, very fortunate. I have a great employer that I have um, a great medical plan. Not everyone does. Um, so I've, I understand that that can be challenging. And so we're going to have a subject matter expert come out and, t and help us navigate through how to access um, healthcare. So I'm, there's a couple other um, brief business things before I bring our subject matter expert on. Um, but the second thing I do wanna talk about, you have a handout for. Um, and that is the second program. It's very similar to what we're doing here tonight. And I've got a couple of veterans on my left here who are familiar with my second program. Um, my second program is called Healthy You, a series of conversations. And that program deals spe specifically with mental health. Um, that is my passion. That's what I um, advocate for. Um, so mental health is, um, topics that we that we talk about um, last in earlier this month in January uh, we talked on healthy versus unhealthy relationships for teens um, now I don't have any teens anymore um, but I really wish I would have um, had a, a presentation like that when my kids were young or certainly a hundred years ago when I was young um, so um, that was the F Florida Department of Health they did a phenomenal presentation um, next Wednesday night, we're doing the next session on homelessness um, and the impacts on the Treasure Coast. Um, in my experience, no one wants to say the H word, and yet we have homeless people in Port St. Lucie. So we need to talk about it and get educated. I've got three subject matter experts coming out on that one. Um, and then the whole uh, 12 next 12 months are programmed out. I've got presenters. Um, we will talk um, about adoption. Um, it, we will talk about resilience building, how to be strong, how to say no. Um, the next one in, in May anyway will be substance use disorder with alcohol. Um, that is not my lived experience, but we, and we've never in a healthy you even talked about the alcohol. Um, that's a very big need on, in our community today. Um, the next session after that in June is on bullying, cyber bullying and internet safety. Um, that was an eye opener for me. Um, Bullying has been has been straight up bullying has been around since my day and long before that, um, but not that cyber bullying and the Internet safety that wasn't in my day so it's it's a great piece um, our Port St Lucie Police Department is the presenter for that. Um, Gretchen Raziella she does a great job um, and then in July we'll talk suicide awareness. Um, we all see the statistics we see the data that's coming across our headlines, we need to talk about it. Um, in August, every August, we will always talk, while I'm here, we will always talk about the opioid epidemic um, that's raging our country. Um, and then in September, I'm very excited about this one, we're gonna talk on post-traumatic stress disorder, um, PTSD. And um, we have some great presenters on that one, um, but we're also going to have a panel of veterans um, at that, that will um, speak to their experience with PTSD. Um, and then all of the monthly sessions for Healthy You are held at the Port St. Lucie Community Center. That's right there across from City Hall at Eroso and Port St. Lucie Boulevard. All of them are held there with the exception of the next one that I'm gonna tell you about. And it's in October. And the topic there is anxiety reduction techniques to use in nature. Um, and so it's going to be at Botanical Gardens. And I've got a phenomenal um, gentleman coming. Um, he is a therapeutic recreation for the former Parks and Rec people here. Um, therapeutic recreation specialist coming to us um, from HCA Lawnwood. 
And what he's going to do is, I'm not sure if there's anybody in the world who's not impacted by anxiety, um, mm -hmm. some of us more so than others. But what he's going to do is lead us through the garden and, and give us practical ways that when I'm sitting at my desk, I was today at my desk and I can just feel, you know, and my shoulders are raising the, the practical exercises that I can use to kind of just go, mm, you know what, and you, in nature. Um, and so it's, he's told me some of his exercises that he's going to do, and it's going to be really cool. Um, in November, we'll talk about telemental health. Um, that's kind of a big topic today um, due to the pandemic. Um, how are people getting their health? And then we're going to close out in December. Um, pretty much every December, I talk about depression and holiday stress. Um, so that's it in a nutshell for 2023 with Healthy You. Same format as tonight. Um, um, 6 30 to 8 o'clock only on Wednesday nights. So check out your um, your um, brochures and your flyers. The only thing I would recommend is because we're now thanks to, thanks to the city doing the free meals um, at them. I need everyone who's interested to pre register. Um, now I know many of you already did for tonight and that's great. Um, but you do need to pre register so that I know how many meals to order. Um, I do have to cap it for our facilities when I have met the city um, at 50 people um, because of the room capacity. But um, so to pre-register, you simply go to our city's website, which is www.cityofpsl.com forward slash healthy you. And it's you um, for healthy you. Um, so be sure to do that and pre-register. Um, some of our sessions for healthy you depends on the topic do fill up um, depending on the topic. So um, so that's a little bit about the programming that's off that's available to you free of charge. Um, and um, so what I want to do right now is and again, please refer to your brochures. And um, um, just a reminder, all of the sessions are free. Um, so if I didn't cover that already, um, but now if I could, Tim, any chance you can get our sponsor? Thank you, sir. Um, for, for just a minute or two, um, this session of the Wellness Connection is sponsored. Um, so we had a wonderful sponsor step up um, from the community. Please be careful over here. And um, I just wanted him to have an opportunity to share um, what it is that he does. They saw the topic of heart health and they were all over it. Um, so this is um, a gentleman from Ultimate Health Health plans, right? Oh, you're so good at this. I know what I am. Memory, I you need to stand right here, right in front of the laptop, please. Okay. Thank you, Pat. I'll only be a second. Thank you all for, for coming and letting us share in your event here. Uh, my name is Nicholas. Our plan is called Ultimate Health Plans, and we're a Florida based company, and we really just focus on heart, diabetes, um, COPD, cardiovascular issues. The more issues that you have, the more things that you actually get with the plan, which is wonderful. So if you have a heart problem, like I had a quadruple bypass. So for the rest of my life, I'm always going to have heart disease. My expen my medicines will be very expensive. Any of the, any things that I go through will be expensive and always a risk. Know? So then we have a plan that just builds around that to make sure you get $150 a month in healthy foods and benefits. They give you back your Part B benefits. They take care of all your know, medicines. You never go in the donut hole. Some fantastic stuff. And this is a Florida company. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you about it more. But if you want to know, I've got my brochures out there. I'm going to come and show you out. It is a Medicare Part B. And if you're on care you can change up until the end of March and incorporate that into your health care okay but otherwise let's live forever thank you thank you, very much. Thank you. Pat, when you're talking about the cyber or the cyber or the bowling yes ma'am I'm not sitting at the bowling but the safety cyber is that like for older people that you know like just general safety about they want a computer and people hacking and that type of thing. Yeah. Well, or is it more a teenage thing? Built it, It's more. Um, how do I say it? 
um, Gretchen really covers, um, you know, the bully, the traditional bullying, the cyber bullying, and and what I get mostly is parents or grandparents who are coming to this, who want to understand what's coming in on the, on their kids' phones, and should know what's coming in on their kids' phone. Um, but I would not say it's about how to prevent hacking or anything like that. It's um it's really the education, and again, it's the, mainly the family members. I've had. I did have a couple of young young people come and um, who were actually and that's why I love healthy you um, because they were actually being bullied at school. And so they wanted some tips from the presenter on how to um, talk about that and how to prevent that and mom was there and mom could listen and, and get some tips as well um, so. Um, but I would not say it's about how to prevent hacking no ma'am. Um, so thank you to the gentleman from Ultimate Health Plan. Um, we appreciate his, I do, his sponsorship so much and recognizing the need. Um, so if you have a minute, feel free to swing by and, and chat with him before you leave tonight. Um, but we're going to roll right into the main piece of this presentation, and that's not about Patty for sure. Um, so I'm very excited tonight. Um, I met this young lady, oh, geez, now six, ten months ago, maybe. Um, but Brittany, uh, and I'll probably mispronounce, and I apologize, Jean Philippe, close enough? All right, is a community impact director with the American Heart Association. How much bigger do you get than that? She graduated from Tulane University in New Orleans with her Master's of Public Health. She also holds a Bachelor's of Science in Health Education from the University of Florida and is a master certified health education specialist. So without further ado, I'm gonna welcome um, uh, Brittany up to um, have the hot seat over here. And um, we've got the clicker on. One last thing, every session of Wellness Connection and um, Healthy You is recorded. Um, so I've got the recording on, and, um, but I would ask you to be patient. It takes about one to two weeks after tonight for our communications folks to get the recording on the website. But give it about a week or two, then go on the web. And if, or if you have people who couldn't make it tonight, I had one lady who doesn't drive anymore after dark. Um, so I told her just hang and, and wait and it'll be on the website. Um, so um, just, just know that, that it's not tonight only, that it, it lives on, <laughs> um, if you will. So here is Brittany. Thank you, Patty. And in addition to the handouts that were on your chair, you'll also be able to access the PDF of these slides online as well once it goes live. So thank you all. How is everybody doing tonight? So happy that you're willing to spend your evening with me and learn a little bit more. I have a question. You don't have any computer skills. I mean, I found that I signed up to community center, but most of the resources that I'll go over will be in the the packet on your um, seat so you can just that should be good enough it will go over almost everything um, no Sorry, um, but please feel free. Uh, that's that's why we have our guest services. Um, I mean, that's how I get my. I have to gather my information other ways instead. I don't have to share stuff. I I was in a mall the other day, and some woman was wearing a, a t-shirt that said um, hashtag last my seconds, and she said hashtag is something something that really ends up. I don't have any skill. And then I was listening to the radio, and, and um, Taylor Swift was saying and talking about the anti hero and how it's, the problem is me. You know, and it was just really, and I said, Are the kids that confused today? I mean, do they really not know? I mean, I look at it as the anti hero is really the anti Christ, but she uses hero because there's so many atheists in the world, and that's why she uses. Yeah, I Very good. Um, the only thing I would I would that I failed to do, and if you my returners here, I did it last time too. 
I got to remember the way that we're situated here is when when and I, I encourage questions and Brittany will go over um, her preference on questions, <clears throat> but um, I will say this much and I didn't go over it with Brittany either is when you guys ask a question, Brittany is going to have to repeat that question <coughs> back because otherwise in the recording they're not going to hear. Um, they're they're going to hear Brittany giving the response back, but they're not going to know what your question was. So if you ask the question, um, you know, uh, I'm not very computer literate, and how do I um, register or get some of these resources? Brittany will re will repeat that back, and then she'll give her response. Okay. So that's all I want to say. Go back to it, Brittany. And I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Thank you for mentioning that, Patty. So I just want to share a little bit about myself. So I am the Community Impact Director with the American Heart Association. Our office is located in West Palm Beach, but we serve Palm Beach and the Treasure Coast. And I've been with the agency for a little over a year now. And why this is so important to me is because I have lost a grandmother from a heart attack. I've lost my grandfather <laughs> to a stroke. And I know the power of prevention and the things that you can do in order to um, not continue that that history of um, having heart attacks and strokes. And just to kind of get a sense of the room, I wanted to start off with just a question. Um, how many of you, by show of hands, have either directly been impacted by um, cardiovascular disease or have a family member that's been impacted by cardiovascular disease? So I can see that this is something that definitely has touched each of us. And one thing I can say is there's power in prevention. So what we're going to be diving into today is just some of the ways that either you yourself can help to um, reduce the impact of a second um, cardiovascular disease incidence or can really promote in your family and among your friends how they can pre prevent having um, a cardiovascular disease incident. Let me see. Maybe I could just. Technology. So while that's, we're working on that transition piece, what we're going to be talking about today is Life Essential 8. And Life Essential 8 are eight key measures for improving and maintaining cardiovascular health as defined by the American Heart Association. And these, cons um, these measures consist of four health behaviors and four health factors. Let me see if I can switch. That'll work. <laughs> How about you or me? Uh, did you press it? I did press the button. Oh. Oh, is that button? working? I pressed the button. No, it's you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. So <clears throat> those are the, I went over that one. So these measures are important because better cardiovascular health helps to lower the risk for heart disease, stroke, major and ma other major health problems. Let me see. Let me see if I can move this down so you guys can see that a little bit better. Awesome. So in, although the goal of Life Essential 8 is to improve heart health, the benefits are transcending impacting just your heart. Our heart and body and mind are all connected. And oftentimes, one positive effect in one area impacts the other area as well. For example, sitting less and moving more has a positive impact on your heart, but it also positively impacts your physical self by helping with the mobility, helping with being stronger. But there's also the part where it 
helps with your your mental it releases mood boosting endorphins so these this is how it all works together as you're improving one area it's also connected and improving another maybe it's a battery issue but the clicking is working for sure <clears throat> So the first ones that we're going to jump into are the four key health factors, which you can see on screen, which include um, blood pressure, making sure that your blood pressure is less than 120 over 80 milligrams per milligrams of mercury, blood lipids, making sure that your um, blood lipids are 130 milligrams per deciliter of non HDL cholesterol, maintaining a healthy weight. So making sure that your body mass index is less than 25 kilograms per meter squared. And your blood sugar, making sure that you um, don't have, if you don't have a history of um, diabetes, that your blood glucose is less than 100 milligrams um, per deciliter or an A1C less than 5.7%. So I know those are a lot of numbers, but the key here is that you should be going in and getting an annual screening with your doctor. And this is a time to really make sure you know these numbers, know if they fall in the right range. And if they're not really working closely with your doctor to monitor those numbers um, in between visits um, and find ways to get them under control, which we're kind of gonna dive into in terms of the lifestyle aspect. But of course, the lifestyle, if you are diagnosed with a specific condition, is gonna be paired with any medications or prevention that your doctor has prescribed for you to do as well. So, the next key factors are our health behaviors, which include not smoking, getting adequate sleep, making sure you have a healthy diet, and engaging in physical activity. In the next few slides, we're really going to dive a little bit deeper into what each of these factors, um, why each of these factors are important, and tips for how you can improve it with simple steps. So. We're going to start off with improving your sleep, which I know can be a hard one for many people. So let's start off with a question. True or false? Sleeping in on the weekend helps you to catch up on sleep. False. And that is correct. It is false. Um, really, it negatively impacts you to, um, to not keep that consistent sleep pattern. And really, once you sleep in late on the weekend, then when it, Monday rolls around, you've really thrown off your body and it can make it harder to wake up, really interrupt your sleep pattern and rhythm. So it's important to each day get that consistent um, amount of sleep. And I have an extra pop quiz. If, and if somebody could just raise their hand and answer, and if you get the correct answer, you'll get a little prize. So how many hours of sleep should an adult get per night? If you could raise your hand. Oh. Thank oh, you. Seven to nine hours. That's perfect. Seven to nine hours of sleep. This is for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And there will be more opportunities throughout the presentation to, to win a prize, so make sure your hand is, is ready. Um, from from my knowledge from the research, it has been proven to for most adults to need that seven to nine hours of sleep. So I would have to um, 
be more familiar with with that component of being okay with having less. So I'm sorry, I can't fully answer that question. I've always been a four hour sleep, even from a little baby as a kid. And I went to a doctor and they said, I'm just a percentage that four hours is enough. Even now I'm in my seventies, I'm still four hours. And if I sleep too much, I get groggy. Is that the way it is with other people from seven to nine, if they sleep 10 hours, they get, like, if I sleep too much, I get the, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like a bad way to go. I'm not is sure that about normal? that. I guess that's, there's always, a range that's best for for the majority, but there's always going to be exceptions to all of that. If you're in a comfortable range and you feel like you're getting adequate sleep, then keep on. <laughs> I need some of those genetics so I can run on a little less sleep. <laughs> so whether you're good to sleep on four hours or you're in the category of the seven to nine, there are so many benefits to getting enough sleep. And it's not just that you're going to feel energized waking up, but you're also going to be able to really benefit from one, it lowering your risk for chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes, strengthening your immune system, and improving your mood. So once again, it's not just the benefits on your, your heart health or chronic disease outcomes, but you're impacting your, your mind, you're impacting your physical body by making this choice to sleep more. But I know it can be hard. So for those of you in the room who are maybe on a journey to getting more sleep, or for those of you in the room who um, are getting more sleep, can somebody share with me um, what are some ways that you ensure that you are getting enough sleep each night? So someone just mentioned turning off their TV and putting their phone away. Meditation music. Meditation and music before um, bed. So those are some great techniques and it's going to really align with some of the things that you should add more of. So you want to make sure that you're um, really doing small things like you can get more natural light exposure throughout the day and regular exercise. Um, those are things that help you with really being able to unwind at night. And then also building in a consistent nighttime routine that can help you to go to bed on time and wake up at the same time each day, including on weekends. And similar to what was mentioned, um, you want to get less of certain things as well, less of your screen time, whether it's your TV or your phone before bed. And then also being able to decrease things like caffeine, a heavy meal, alcohol or nicotine a few hours before bed. And of course, to help you, you can always switch your screen time with some relaxing techniques like what was mentioned, meditation or those calming music to really get your mind not worried about the day, not worried about all your 5 billion to do's that you have to get done and really get yourself in the mindset of being ready for sleep. So next up, we're going to be talking about improving your diet. So similar to before, we're going to start with a true or false. When it comes to getting fruits and veggies, fresh is always best. True or false? Mm -hmm. False. <laughs> so a healthy diet can include fresh and frozen as well as canned and dried produce. And sometimes because it's frozen at its peak freshness, it can also be 
equally as nutritious. Um, so the main thing to keep in mind with those options are making sure that there's um, no added sugar and no added sodium. Those are the exceptions. <laughs> so I'm going to do a pop quiz again. And I'm going to keep a close eye because everybody's <clears throat> hands shot up last time. So how many servings of fresh fruits and vegetables should an adult be getting per day? Three to five. I'll give it to you because you're close. Four to five servings of each. Yeah, four to five servings of each per day. <laughs> so similar when it comes to a healthy diet sometimes all we really think about is eating healthy so that you can lose weight or maintain a certain weight but the benefits go way beyond just your weight. Really, it also helps you to um, reduce your risk of chronic conditions like a heart attack, stroke, type two diabetes, and the components of the healthy diet like fruits, vegetables, and healthy omega-3 fats can help keep depression at bay based on the research. So, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> I am going to open the floor up for anybody to share something that you currently do to have a heart healthy diet. Can I get one volunteer to share what they do to have a heart healthy diet? Well, I, uh, yeah, but I, I find that I have to make changes. I learned that I have to make changes because I was going through the working out every day at the kitchen. And I thought, well, I'll just go around a few extra calories in my diet, you know? And, but then I found that I, I did it in other meetings and almost two weeks, six months ago, and it's not the end. And I believe in euthanasia, but I believe that's a choice, not my choice, but anybody else's. So I decided to stop, but I'm cranky in the evening. I didn't realize how much she was affected until the other day when she went up one side and down the other, and all of a sudden I'm saying, You need help with this. <laughs> I don't know what you to do. But then I realized, you know, what can I do to change things? You know, um, I decided to make a few changes. And I'm not so sure, I mean, not having as much exercise, um, whether, but I, I feel that. No, all of a sudden things change again, and, and then I don't, you know, I don't want to go have a heart attack. Okay. So, no, it works out. You know, it's like my body's telling me this is what I need to do in order to. Yeah. So I'm definitely hearing that you <laughs> make sure that you're exercising in order to balance it well, out. No, so. No, well, no. I have one more over here. I, have, uh, I eat five meals a day. Five meals a day? Five meals a day. Okay. So eating five small meals a day, thank you. <laughs> so, let me see. So just going on what things you can do. So some healthy diets include the DASH diet and the Mediterranean diet plans. But even if you're not gonna be on a specific diet plan, um, there are a few key components of a heart healthy diet. This includes focusing on swapping your refined white grains for whole grain options like whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, and also trying to make half your plate um, at each meal, a vegetable and a fruit or a fruit, not and a fruit, or a fruit. So this can really um, help you with getting in those, those 
four to five servings per day when you're making half your plate that sh that choice and then of course as you're swapping out certain items it's also going to help improve with your cholesterol as you're getting more whole grains it's also to really important to um, incorporate more lean meats so this could be like your chicken your fish but also those plant-based proteins are a great option as well. And some surprising ones include mushrooms, your beans, and quinoa. So those are a few really good ones that you can start swapping out in your diet. And of course, with anything, when you're getting more of one thing, it's also important in a heart healthy diet to reduce, reduce certain things. A big thing to reduce is gonna be your uh, added sugars, sodium, red or processed meats, or saturated fats. And it's really important to re read your nutrition labels because a lot of times those excess sugar and added fat, um, excess sugar and added salt and, and sodium can really be hidden in some of the some of the things that you wouldn't even expect. So it's important to take the time when you're buying a product to read the label and see does this have, um, how much salt does this have per serving? It's also important to limit your consumption of alcohol, refined carbohydrates, full fat dairy products, and then tropical oils like co coconut or palm oil. And those are um, going to really help you with reducing that extra intake of salt, reducing the extra intake of the saturated fats, um, which can lead to elevated blood pressure, increasing your risk of, um, of type two diabetes, increasing your risk of high cholesterol. So can you use coconut oil, like instead of vegetable oil and olive oil? So the question is, can you use coconut <clears throat> oil instead of vegetable oil and olive oil? So coconut oil is, a saturated fat, so it, it would still be recommended to use it in moderation. Um, I do know that a lot of people use it in like instead of like butter in some of like their baking recipes, since it is good for baking. But it would still be recommended to use it in moderation. Nice. <laughs> Everything in moderation. I just started baking, so now I'm trying to use different things. Right. So I can use coconut oil instead of those things. And I mean, it doesn't but mess up the recipe. Hmm? Olive oil is good for you. Yes, olive oil um, is going to be a, a non tropical fat, so it is healthier, it's less saturated. So that's the benefit there. But with all things, you don't want to be deep frying in olive oil. It's not going to be as beneficial if you're deep frying in olive oil instead of um, palm oil. So definitely still keeping that in mind. <laughs> yes, so just take out the frying. You know, we have work, eat, everything so busy. Uh, you don't have time to shop for the fresh, you know, produce. Cut them up, you know, prepare them, wash them, and cut them up, and then they, they stir fry or 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 you know, or, 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 you know or oven, you know, fry. Mm -hmm. it, it's easy to get some like processed food, the uh, frozen <coughs> dinner plates, you know, from the store. Just put in the in the oven <laughs> or in a, in the refrigerator uh, in a um, you know a microwave. So it's quick and easy. Pizza, hot dogs, the ready available, and then all the processed food they put stuff in there, make it so tasty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's hard to balance. It's everywhere. So the comment we got is that it's it's hard to to really have the time to purchase the fresh options and then to to cook it, um, prepare it. And a lot of times it's easier to purchase those pre-made foods and then to eat that, especially since a lot of times the flavoring and the additives can make it good. <laughs> so just repeating that for everybody on who will be watching the recording, but there are definitely some ways to really make the healthier choice, the easy choice. Um, a tip that works for me 
is really meal prepping. So taking a day out of the week to like cut everything up on that same day. And sometimes one tip that I've heard is it doesn't take that much more time or cleaning to double your recipe and then freeze it and make your own um, easy freezer meal. So that's something to a, a tip that I kind of live by to just double it, have it for later. Um, So when it comes down to it, it's a commitment. Either you're going to do it or you're not. <laughs> yes, it is a commitment. Either you're going to do it or you're not. <laughs> and I don't need to go shopping and having somebody think that I'm the room because I'm buying and stuff that, you know, which is really sad because it has things in our society today. And, you know, it's, it's really sad. And, it is. And what I see is a lot of the women, it seems to me, are on a medication and they should be off of because it's having that effect on them. And they don't want to go off it because they can't keep the way they love it. And it's a complete routine problem. Thank you, you know, for sharing. So now we're going to move into talking about improving your physical activity. So really increasing physical activity. And once again, true or false, to get enough activity in your day, you need to work out. <laughs> it is a loaded question. So it is false because you don't need to do a specific workout. You don't need to go and hit the gym, hit a, I'm a, I'm a CrossFit person, so you don't need to go and do that CrossFit workout, do the high intensity Zumba or anything like that. All movement counts and can boost your health. Um, and really even just taking day breaks within your day to go out, take your dog for a walk, um, those things all add up. And another pop quiz, who's ready for this one? <laughs> so how many minutes per week of moderate aerobic activity should adults get? Spot on, 150 minutes is what an adult should be getting of physical activity. <laughs> Are you getting put on the spot over here? <laughs> so some of the benefits of moving more really include, again, it's not just about having the perfect physique and losing weight. There's so much more. This could include one, lowering your blood pressure by being more active, con helping to control your blood sugar, reducing your risk of a heart attack, stroke, and once again, those, those mood boosting benefits of what it helps to flood your brain with feel good chemicals, your endorphins, after you've engaged in physical activity. So once again, helping the whole body by being active. So I shared how I like to be active and get movement into my day. Can I get, I wanna really encourage some new volunteers who haven't spoken yet to share how you are getting or have an idea of how to get physical activity in your day. I'm gonna let your husband go. Yeah. <laughs> Get 152 minutes a week. Okay. <laughs> I love it. So you're walking, you're riding your bike. Oh, playing pickleball. Walking the dog. So really, those are some great ways that you can um, get active. And it, it really incorporates to what you see here, getting out, getting that fresh air. You can go out, you can play with the kids, play with the grandkids outside, take them away from the screen, play a little tag, run around. Um, if you are out at work or doing a bunch of um, 
laptop work where you're just sitting in front of the screen, get up, take a break, move around, um, a stretch break, uh, a little walking break. Those breaks add up. Each day you can start by trying to hit 10 consistent minutes of some movement, some physical activity. And then over time, start to increase it to hit the 150 minutes a week, which would look like about 20 to 25 minutes of physical activity per day. So it's not that much, start small, work your way up. Jumping ahead. So the question is for physical for the physical activities for hitting the 25 minutes per day, does it have to be consecutive and it doesn't have to be consecutive you can break it up into the increments that are going to feel comfortable for you throughout the day. The main goal is just to at the end of the week hit that 150 minutes of activity. And <laughs> that's a creative way to make sure you get up and move more. And on that note of sitting less and getting up more, it's really that's going to be a, a big piece. It's been found that just as um, it's just as unhealthy for you to be sitting all the time. So really making sure that you are not consistently sitting, <laughs> whether it's at your desk, whether it's to look at a screen, get up and move more. That's going to be a, a, a big piece of helping you. So the last piece we're going to jump into is quitting nicotine. So true or false, nicotine helps you relax. False. Everybody got that one real fast. Yes, it it is false. Nicotine um, can increase stress levels and trap you in a cycle of addiction. And in a the Truth Initiative surveys of young um, adults who quit vaping, they found that ninety percent of them who had quit, they actually felt less stressed, less anxious, or depressed. So there's a reverse once you do quit. Um, so pop quiz again, this is gonna be a little bit harder, but it's multiple choice. Individuals who smoke are how much more likely to be at risk of a stroke? A, seven to eight times more likely. B, two to four times more likely. C, equally as likely. A. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got it right the second time. Oh, thank you. you raised your hand fast on the second, the second time. Yes. <laughs> so it is B, you are two to four times more likely to be at risk of a stroke if you smoke and also two to four times more likely to be at risk of heart disease so in addition to that why do people because they think it helps them with cool. being less stressed there's a lot of reasons why people yeah, right, smoke <laughs> i can answer that one because it's addictive yeah. Yeah. why do people smoke yeah. the answer in the room is it's addictive <laughs> So nicotine is highly addictive. And once somebody does start for whatever reason they do, then it becomes a cycle for them. And <clears throat> thankfully, there are supports out there to help somebody with quit smoking. And there's benefits for... Yes. Like with anything, you do have to be in that state where you are ready to commit to a change. And hopefully some of these things that I share, if you know somebody who is currently smoking, it could encourage them to be ready. So what are the benefits of quitting smoking? Well, on average, a smoker dies more than 10 years earlier than a non-smoker. But 
by making the choice to quit, you'll increase your chances of living longer. Unfortunately, and but unfortunately, we've seen, fortunately, we've seen a decrease in traditional smoking. But unfortunately, we have seen a rise, especially among um, kids and young adults in vaping. And the... Hmm? So that's one of the things I'm going to touch on. So really to get a new generation hooked on nicotine and smoking, the tobacco companies are actually spending almost $1 million an hour to aggressively market vapes as a trendy, less addictive way to smoke. But it's not true. And that's and that's a big piece. A lot of it is it's flavored. It's they make you believe that it's there's no smell attached to it. So it's not having an impact. But we do know from the research that it does have an impact on the respiratory system. It is just as addictive. So it's really important whether you're getting your nicotine through vaping or through cigarette use to really make the choice to quit. Is, I'm sorry, and, is it nicotine and vaping? Mm -hmm. As well as other chemicals. <clears throat> And the question was, is there nicotine in vaping? And the answer was yes. <laughs> I have to keep reminding myself to do that. Well. Sorry, everybody well. online. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna maybe challenge another person who hasn't shared um, on what are what is a way um, that you could support somebody who you know wanting to quit smoking. Anybody want to share a way they feel like they could support somebody who wanted to quit smoking? I've gotten my daughter Nicorette, the thing that's been doing good, though, but <laughs> that was my way of trying to help her. Nicorette, okay. So that is, um, for people who aren't aware of that, what that is, that is a, a, a gun that can help, or a patch sometimes that can help with quitting. So as you're going through that withdrawal, it can help you get a lower dose of the nicotine until you're ready to completely cut it off. So one thing that can help is one, smokers are going to need, if they're ready to, to quit smoking, they're going to need support. So that's going to be the biggest thing, one, supporting them in that journey, and then also connecting them to resources. Oftentimes, things like just doing the patch by itself may not be as effective, but there's programs through... Um, Tobacco Free Florida, which there's information in the back of your packets on that resource. There's um, support not just to only get the um, patches or the gums, which they do get for free if they do do the classes, but they're also getting um, the support through counseling, getting interaction with other peers who are on this same journey of quitting using tobacco. So support is gonna be a big piece. Sometimes people want to smoke in association with other behaviors. So if you sit down with your wife or a spouse at the table and you're having a cup of coffee, maybe you should change the manner in which you do the cup of coffee so you're not sorry to smoke. So it's associated behaviors. If you can help to control that, you may be able to control the person. You have access to what you think. So the comment was that sometimes a smoker will want to continue to smoke with its when it's associated with certain behaviors. So really shape, making a change to the behaviors that it is associated with. And that is a great tip. And we'll also go into um, that on things that you should get less of. Um, but in, in addition to what you can do more, uh, oftentimes getting that physical activity can help boost your mood, help you with reducing those cravings to wanna smoke. Also, we need to reward ourselves, setting up a, a reward system. So as you hit certain milestones, maybe you go and give yourself a massage. Maybe you go and um, take yourself out to a movie, to a certain restaurant, something to reward yourself along that journey. And if an individual does go backwards in their journey, having that grace with themselves so they don't just spiral fully, 
but they're able to continue forward after going backwards. And things to get less of. As was mentioned, if you have a social trigger, if there's something that you usually do that triggers you or makes you feel like you want to smoke and you always do it together, make sure to be mindful of that and eliminate that trigger, um, whether it's social or a situational trigger. Um, if there's certain emotions that you feel where you're like, oh, I need to um, now smoke because I'm dealing with that emotion, find another um, way to cope with that emotion, whether it's choosing somebody to talk to, if it's a stress trigger, um, going out to take a walk instead, what is going to help you to deal with that emotional trigger? And of course, if you're used to hanging out with the same group of people who consistently go and smoke, that's going to be a, a, a social trigger that you're going to want to avoid. <clears throat> so I know that was a lot. And oftentimes it can be hard to know where to start. But I want to remind you, once again, everything's connected. And I, I highly recommend start by getting your annual visit if you haven't gotten your annual visit, because your numbers will direct you into where is the most important place to start. And as you've heard throughout this presentation, once you start working on one area, um, it really is going to start impacting some of the other area as well. And once you, it all is a chain reaction. You get better sleep, you have the energy to prep that food and eat healthier, and then now you are fueled by the healthy food and you're able to jump into being more physically active. So really rely on that chain reaction. Get yourself started with one small thing and see how it propels you to the next small thing. And these are just some resources. Um, most of them are printed out and in your hand, which are our Life's Essential 8 handouts. Um, again, I mentioned talk to your provider. If you don't have a provider, if you don't have insurance, um, of course, Patty mentioned not everybody has access to a great insurance. Um, there is an option out front for a great insurance, if, especially if you've had a, um, a health issue. But there are federally qualified health centers that are in this area that you can tap into that provide care on a sliding scale fee, um, which means based on your income, it could be lower. So tap into that, but make sure you're getting that visit also, a recent resource that I put a flyer for, we worked with um, the American Heart Association worked with the Indian River State College Pruitt Library, which is a part of the college library system, but also a part of the St. Lucie County Library system to offer a loner blood pressure monitor program called Libraries with Heart. So that's a way for you to help with getting knowing your blood pressure numbers you can just like a book you can check out a blood pressure monitor um, and get a better understanding of your numbers if you do truly have elevated numbers and then go into your doctor with that equip with that information and get your your blood pressure under control under the direction of your provider so that there's a flyer for there as well. All you need is either your is your your library card, and you can go and check that out. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there's information about if you do know somebody who is maybe ready to start quitting smoking, whether it's vaping or traditional cigarettes. There's information about um, the smoking cessation through the Everglades AHEC, which should be presenting at the next session. So get them connected. They get the free quit medication. They also get access to those virtual classes. There's also a few in person, but a lot of people love virtual nowadays. So get them connected. And that is everything. I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation. That was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Lots of opportunity for questions and answers and to, to dig deep and, and get some answers. Um, I do want to just share one thing, and um, my returners know this. Um, the beauty of this, one of the beauties of this program 
is that this young lady um, is drove up to, um, to visit us here in northern Port St. Lucie, and um, she drove from West Palm Beach, right? Yeah. Okay, she makes it sound like nothing. Okay, <laughs> I've got three miles to go home. Okay, and and, and uh, but she drove up from West Palm Beach. She'll go even further home to her house, and healthy. Or, I'm sorry, Wellness Connection. I'm getting my programs mixed up. Pays her nothing for this. Yeah. Um, my subject matter experts. I have never. Uh, it, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing, and you. This couple knows that. Um, they come to us because they're passionate. Um, about doing what we're doing tonight, and that is educating the public. So um, that's a, a real message that we need to, to share. Um, I've got, I know there's a newer couple here to the Treasure Coast, if you will, um, but I have personally never um, worked in a community where there are so many passionate, especially mental health care providers, and now health care providers that want to get the information out there. So it's never been an issue for Healthy You. Um, you know, I'm not a wealthy department. I, 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 I don't have those resources. Um, but fortunately, with people like Brittany, um, they're coming out to spread this awareness. Um, and the only other thing I would close with is, um, is this. Again, to my returning people, um, I have never in the three years of Healthy You and in the almost one year of Wellness Connection ever stood up here and tried to sell anything to you. Have I? Okay, and I could, <laughs> I could. Um, this is a topic. I'm not the fitness person in the, at all, um, but we operate two fitness centers at the at, at under the city of Port St. Lucie. I'm not here to sell that. What I am here to sell you is if you're a resident or a visitor to Port St. Lucie, you guys have 48 parks. 48 parks. They are all free. Um, you get out and I look at me okay but but all i ask is get out and move i move very differently than my colleague in the corner here mr murphy um but i can move okay it just looks differently and so i can go to woodstork trail or i can go to um any of our, our okamic park and and i can get out and move a little bit that's better than than sitting at home on the couch so that's the my only message is I try to try to get out is you have beautiful parks available to you and it costs nothing. Um, so for heart heart health, that would be my message is is we're here for you and it is it is free and um, just get out and enjoy it. So I have nothing further for the evening. Um, I want to thank you guys all so much for coming out um, and. Um, Swing by um, the gentleman um, in front if you want more information. Otherwise, safe travels home. Um, uh, again, Wednesday night is homelessness at the community center. And then in April, we'll be talking tobacco and vaping cessation out at Minsky Gym. So check your handouts and thank you again for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.